Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of AutoCAD Professional Dialogues. Today we have with us Mr. Ronald Bushara, MD and CEO of Celantis India and Mr. Saurabh Vatsa, the head of Brand Citroen in India. Ronald, Saurabh, thank you very much for talking to us and for sparing out the time today. Actually, uh, the launch of uh, the, C the new C3 uh, is clearly the start of uh, the proof of a long commitment of Stellantis in India. We announced that uh, India, for the group, is a strategic country. And we announced as well uh, the development of a new platform, which was new for the group, first in India. This platform, so called the Smart Car Program, the Smart Car Platform, we said uh, uh, we should uh, uh, develop a, a family of cars. And the first one is a new C3, and you will see multiple body style coming one every year, at least for the next four years. Conceptualize, develop engineering in India. So it is why the launch of this car. Uh, is, uh, is illustrating this long commitment, this footprint we have in India, and uh, uh, the first car uh, from a family which is going to come. Now, with, uh, with the C3, we are going to tackle uh, the mainstream segment, notably below 4 meters, which is representing more than 70% of the market in India. We will be positioned as a hatch with SUV attitude or codification. You have, you have the opportunity to see the car and you see the, the, the brand clearance and the seat on the back higher and the look on the front and the back are showing clearly that we have this kind of SUV codification with the still uh, Citroën DNA and thermal style and more important, the USP and thermal comfort. So it's more than one car. As I said, uh, uh, the segment below 4 meters uh, uh, is representing 70 percent. Uh, uh, the sub-segment where we are going to be is quite significant uh, because it's a kind of uh, 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 a BSUV. Uh, we can say compact SUV or SUV codification. Um, uh, clearly, we have uh, the objective to become a key player. We are not used to give any uh, figures uh, about it because we don't know what will be the market, you know what I mean, with the COVID experience, the worldwide crisis, etc. Having said that, what I would like to tell you is that our ambition is, uh, which is much more to make sure that we are going to have a, a, a consistent growth over the next years uh, with our ability to launch a new car every year. The next one being the EC3, which has been announced, plus another one and other ones over the next years with different body styles. So the most important point uh, is not exactly to chase the volume, is much more to make sure that we are going to grow, to grow in terms of volume consistently with and being profitable. That is very important is very important because the profitability is going to ensure us about our ability to invest in new technology and new product life cycle management and new uh, products as well. We have to be true and honest to ourselves and to the consumer. This vehicle was uh, configured as a uh, sub 4 meter hatch. And, um, Based on feedback from the consumer, this has a very strong SUV uh, attitude and a stance. When you look at the overall styling and design, 180mm ground clearance, large wheels, a, a bonnet which is high, a high roof line, tall seating in the front and theater style seating at the back. The entire thing feels like an SUV, but it is a sub 4 meter hatch. So we have to be true and honest uh, to how the, 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 the vehicle was configured and to exactly what the consumers wanted. And which is why we are saying it's a, it's a hatch with a twist, uh, because uh, it comes with a twist of uh, a strong SUV attitude. Very clearly, the, like Rolo mentioned, I mean, it goes towards the compact SUVs in the BH segment, and obviously there will be some overlap with the BH uh, as well. 
Now, uh, when, when we say that we've taken five years to configure the vehicle, develop the platform, 95% plus localization, you will understand that we would have gone to the consumer multiple times, not just once. So therefore, there is a strong inbuilt uh, uh, feedback from the consumers in this vehicle, which is what makes us confident that when we go with a hatch with the SUV stance, people are going to accept it because this, this is based on feedback from them. It's also based on uh, you know, configurations uh, from the consumer. So, uh, absolutely clear that the young progressive audience, which starts from 28, goes up to 38, could spill over on both sides, 25 to 40. This vehicle is configured to deliver what they wanted, including things like, you know, when you look at the large screen, that's what the people wanted. They didn't want a vertical screen, they wanted a horizontal screen, so that when you have a tall seating, you don't have to take your eyes off the road, you just have to look at the screen and come back into your line of sight. That level of fine tuning based on uh, insight from the consumers has been done onto the vehicle and therefore we quite confident. Part of the life cycle, it, it's life cycle doesn't mean we wait till the uh, exit. Uh, it also means that uh, you need to understand a little bit about the industrialization at this point in time because we have a powertrain set up at Hosur. Mm -hmm. uh, that setup is very important and it has come up before the vehicle assembly has started. So that's, that's, that's a game which is being slightly differently played because most OEMs do the powertrain localization much later after the vehicle uh, assembly yeah. operations. So here we are doing it differently and we've started exports like Rolo mentioned already from Hosur, 250,000 plus gearboxes have been sent to Europe. Hosur factory right now is also assembling the C5 uh, 2 litre diesel engine. It is going to make both the uh, petrol engines that will come onto the C3. It will make both the transmissions which will come, the 5-speed and the 6-speed transmission which will come on the C3. Therefore, it's important for us to make sure that uh, from an industrialization perspective, we maintain the cost quality which is going into all these different powertrain combinations which are getting supplied from there. And obviously, the automatic comes as a uh, uh, life cycle activity. We have some plan to, to export uh, this car that we will uh, develop uh, later on. Uh, come back about uh, your point of competitiveness. Uh, you can be competitiveness uh, uh, in India only if you have a rate of localization which is high, which is the case uh, with the C3, because we are talking about uh, a rate of localization which is higher than 95%. You can do it uh, only if you have a, a very uh, strong uh, footprint in India. Uh, I'm not doing, you know what I'm speaking, uh, Stellantis India and has invested so far 1 billion euro in India. We have three factories of which also where, uh, we, we, we are producing the, many, the gearbox and the engine. We are already exporting more than 250,000 gearbox to Europe. That's mean some, it means something. Then we have two R&D. Uh, we have one ICT hub, more, more important, more important. We have developed so far um, now a mature and reliable uh, supplier base in India. Uh, most of the suppliers are within uh, 50 kilometers for each of the factories. So this footprint, which is a kind of ecosystem, uh, uh, is a key. Uh, is key to be competitive in this market. But more than that, it's key as well to give you the flexibility uh, to uh, adapt your product uh, faster than when you, you are not localized. Uh, this, this kind of things are extremely important. Actually, uh, I cannot predict the future. It's difficult. But uh, uh, as you have probably noticed, uh, uh, for the Stellantis today, and, and uh, notably Jeep, uh, which is representing so far the big volume, uh, then we will have uh, Citroën coming up. Uh, we have not suffered so much. Why? Is because, again, uh, the way that we manage this kind of uh, shortage with our uh, Indian supplier base uh, um, has, has been a really a good teamwork. And we have, we have increased our volume by 130% compared with with the previous years, you see what I mean? So, uh, so far, we have been able to manage it. I cannot predict the future, obviously, but uh, again, uh, this footprint and uh, the superior base we have developed so far is an advantage in terms of managing uh, this kind of shortage. I'm not saying that we don't have an issue in the future because we cannot predict the future, 
but at least it's an advantage. When we look at the overall digital uh, uh, program that we have, which is the omni-channel consumer journey that we have uh, for our consumers, very well accepted, right? And why is it very well accepted is because uh, right from, uh, you know, discovering uh, the brand and the product to configuring it online, we have enabled the entire ecosystem, which allows the consumer to look at a 3D configurator, which is online, look at a brand new vehicle, which they've never seen on the road before and explore the vehicle and configure the vehicle the way they would like it to be. On top of that, once you leave that configuration, wherever you are in your journey, you can come into our Lamezo digital network and, and the minute you come in, you just have to share your phone number. Based on that phone number, you can start on a large screen, you can start your configuration from where you left it. Suppose you don't want to come into the showroom, the omni-channel online sales journey is still enabled for you. A lot of people during the pandemic actually shared that with us that no, we want to buy the car because we want mobility and we want individual mobility. But at the same point in time, we don't want to make a journey to the showroom because we are, you know, not, not sure how the uh, situation would be. And, and they, they have completed their entire journey of uh, discovering the car, configuring the car, uh, going in for the final variant that they have, finance and insurance options, uh, accessories, after sales packages that we have, extended warranty and service packages that we have made the payment through the main payment gateway. And then we uh, actually, we have a mechanism by way we, where we invoice the vehicle, uh, do a temporary registration in Thiruvallur. From Thiruvallur, we dispatch the vehicle to the location, the 50 pin codes, like you rightly said, to those 50 locations. And there we have a third party uh, partners, or in some cases, it could be our dealers who, who, right. who extend their services in those locations. And they register the vehicle and that registered vehicle is put on a flatbed and duly uh, brought to your home sure. uh, and, and it's ready to drive. Now, to answer your second question, these 50 PIN codes are being expanded to 90 uh, with okay. the launch of the C3. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is a non-competing model with our uh, dealer network uh, because dealers who could be our uh, last mile delivery partners also get a delivery share. So, it's a non-compete model because obviously we were uh, in 10 cities and we were selling outside these 10 cities as well. The same will continue to happen with the C3 while we expand the, the network to 30 plus this year. Mm -hmm. There could be locations where uh, people would like to drive the C3 and want to buy it. We will provide the vehicle and it's a non-compete model for the dealerships. So it's it's something which is complementary for a consumer and non-compete for the dealerships. So that's that's a that's a good way of having both the options for the consumer. I think what we have to look at is the young and progressives are very digital savvy. Uh, definitely they are already in the discover and search mode at this point in time and we know that because you know all of you are already beginning to talk about the vehicle and people have already started that. Difficult to give a percentage to it because it is at the end of the day an aspirational buy. Yes. Vehicle is an aspirational buy, the whole family gets involved. Uh, difficult to give you a percentage but uh, we are open, the, the channel is open, the channel is live and we will expand it to 90. And let's see what finally the consumers decide because they have to transact online on that. Uh, it's a fully secure channel, but uh, they have to transact and we are ready with that.